few years ago, <clears throat> came up with this idea of having a countdown mechanism. And the idea was is that you'd pull a lever and it'd take a day off from the mechanism, or add a day if that's what you wanted. The idea was is it could be used in classrooms to count down for Christmas or the end of the year. Like I said, that was a year or so ago. There's a lot that goes into a countdown mechanism. A lot of different parts to it. One of the hard parts is the mechanism that just takes a few clicks off from a gear wall. Um, and I found something that would work. A friend had suggested this site, 507movements.com. It's from an old book that describes different mechanical movements. And this is one that looked like it might work. The first phase of developing this was to do my own sketch. And by sketching these out, I'm able to determine how they work. And if you saw the original sketch, you probably realize that I didn't have a very fair understanding of how this worked best based upon these sketches. I draw out different parts. <clears throat> I take pictures of the things I see online to use as as a sketch makeup, but you need to figure out how it works and then how you can make it work. This is a mechanism that I decided to try and build. Now this is just a sketch from an old book, so in order to make it work you have to make it um, on your own machine and make out the pieces to cut out. After designing for about two hours, I came up with the parts for the lever action machine that I was looking for. And this shows them ready to be cut on my CNC machine. I'm back at my workbench. I've got my gear, I've got my pieces. I usually put tags on there. Sometimes they get um, sucked up into the vacuum. And if they get jammed in the machine, uh, they can cause the machine to, to not only break the piece, but to mess up the whole cut. So I put little tags on the cuts as well. So, uh, first part of this is going to be see if I can <clears throat> got an axle that'll let it work. This is the first level. This is the handle. That's the peg mechanism. And what am I missing? I'm missing. This should attach somehow to here, from here to here, and that's what I'm missing. Um, I'll have to draw, I'll have to cut a, a hole into this. Three. So I've got the dowels, I've got to determine where I want this to be cut. I'm thinking probably somewhere in this neighborhood. So I'm just going to mark that with my knife and go put in a three quarter inch hole. So I got the hole drill. I made it a little bit smaller so that it would be tight. Um, now I've got to figure out how to line up this 
with that. And I think I'll probably need a little longer dowel. Let's see, that one will go in there. Now this is really loose and kind of crazy, but um, it's just a concept piece at this point. And so it doesn't have to be perfect. Later on, when I get the design down, see that it's gonna work, I'll go ahead and make it a lot better. But right now, I'm just seeing if this thing will work properly. So, let's see if, so it's supposed to go like that. So I could probably move these a little closer together. My, this mechanism fell out. Let's see if we can get that to work a little better. It doesn't want to stay. Let's see what can we do to make that work a little better? We could probably put some tape on it. Let's see how that that'll slide like that. Let's see if we can get this to slide on there. I'll have to build a washer or something like that. I really didn't recognize that as being a as a real big issue when I or didn't see that space when I was designing it. A lot of times people think you you just tell the computer what to do and the computer will do it for you. Well, that's, that'd be great if it worked that way. It doesn't work that way, though. So... So I was able to mess around with it a little yesterday. And I came up with, um, I think, a little better uh, system. It's the same pieces and everything. I um, just got it to function a little better. And I'll show you what I did because I did this on, a, um, on another piece and it seemed to work really well. Um, so I found a couple little wood spacers that seemed to work a lot better uh, for this apparatus. Um, found the, that probably this one and this one. I don't know if you could see these holes that I, that I drilled in here in the other um, video. It was kind of dark. It's kind of black on black, which I would probably change again. But you see these holes, and what I was looking for was the right amount of space because this has to push up and then it has to have a little slack in it and push back down. And um, I think I got the spacing right on these and it's approximately like that. Um, I'll get this put back together. So you see when the lever comes down like this, it um, pushes down this has to pull it back. I'll turn that one over. So, um, lifts up, and that makes the gear lift up, that part. So this, this simply moves the arm like so. Then once it's there, the lever can push up, comes back down, catches, turns, lifts up again, like that. What I'm going to do today is because uh, this, this needs some sort of stop in it so that it's consistent, that it'll, uh, a little bumper there would make the gear about right. A little bumper here would make it so it would stop at the trough of the of the tooth spacing 
So I need to get that down a little bit. I'm gonna put uh, two more pegs in this and so that it'll move back and forth accordingly. Um, I think you'll see what I mean in, in a few minutes. So I went out and um, made my little pegs here. Um, again, these are a little bit tight because I used a smaller uh, piece on it. I'll use, um, I'm just going to use a little piece of wood to, to tack that in. So that'll be the backstop when it goes up like that. Over here will be the stopper when it comes down like this. I may want to use a shorter piece for that. Um, I need to get it underneath the lever. Let's see if we can do that or make it all clear. Well, let's see how it works. So it goes up, down, And there you have it, a countdown or count up, however you want to do it, um, lever action. Now you can see the usefulness to this if you want to add extra gears to it to make a calendar or a countdown clock or some other counting mechanism. Uh, you're looking at moving it one tooth at a time. Uh, that's a, a really neat little mechanism. Now, I'll probably go ahead and do things like make this out of quarter inch instead of half. Probably do the same for these. I'll leave this a half inch because my gears will be half inch and it should match that. Um, I won't need all these holes in here because I'll just be able to uh, design the new one based upon these two holes. Um, if you remember right, earlier uh, we put a hole here because I I left off that quarter inch hole. I know I said uh, three quarter inch a couple times and I apologize for that, but that's a quarter inch hole um, there and I'll, I'll need to redesign it. I may do the whole thing um, with a uh, one eighth inch bit so I can get those holes, holes a little tighter uh, for the mechanism to work and I can use my cheap uh, dollar store dowels. Quarter inch dowels are probably um, 0.22 inch dowels um, in this mechanism. But all in all, um, I think it works pretty good. It's a pretty simple mechanism. You can kind of see how hard it is to get stuff to actually function properly. Even though you do have the CAD system, you have the computer system, you have the CNC cutting out to perfection, still takes a little experimentation to move something from an 1880s a uh, book on mechanical devices into a uh, contemporary CNC cutout. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, working with it. Uh, probably see this in some future projects. Thanks.